Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, uh, we are uh, here to discuss upon uh, about an interesting uh, topic. Andhra Pradesh as a global food processing hub, unlocking opportunities and overcoming challenges. We are very much delighted to have all of you here uh, to participate in this interesting discussion. So without any further delay, let's uh, uh, start our uh, panel discussion by welcoming the guests uh, and uh, panelists who are present here to enlighten us uh, on this topic, which is dis displayed. So, so uh, now I request uh, uh, Sri T.G. Bharatgaru, Honorable Minister of uh, Industries, uh, Commerce and Food Processing, Government of Andhra Pradesh to come onto the dais. Thank you, sir. Now I request uh, uh, Dr. N. Yuvraj IAS, Secretary of Government, Industries and Commerce. So, yeah. So, sir would be joining in a few minutes. So, meanwhile, I, I would request Dr. Sridhar Cherukuri, IAS, Commissioner of Industries and Chief Executive Officer, AP Food Processing Society, to join uh, uh, the panel. And uh, coming to the representation and the panelists uh, representing industry, uh, Mr. Mayank Shah, Vice President, Parley Products. So, please uh, come on to the dais, sir. Now, I request uh, Mr. Ganapati, Executive Director, Ned Spice. So, please uh, welcome to the dais, sir. Mr. Mr. Satya Rao Jakua, Director, Government Relations, Mondelez India. So, please welcome to the dais, sir. And so now, I request. Uh, uh, Dr. N. Yuvraj IAS, Secretary of the Government, uh, uh, Department of Industries. Please welcome onto the dais, sir. So this uh, interesting topic will be, uh, uh, top session will be moderated by uh, Shri Harish Chandra, Executive Director, Deloitte. Please wel welcome onto the dais, sir. So uh, I'll briefly uh, 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 explain you the layout in, of the discussion. So now uh, our Honorable Minister will deliver his welcome address. It will be followed by a detailed presentation by uh, the Secretary uh, Government of Andhra Pradesh, Department of Industries. And the session will be uh, moderated by Mr. Harish Chandra uh, based on uh, the presentation and uh, also certain insights which will be given by uh, the Com Commissioner of Industries, Government of AP. So now I request uh, Honorable Minister, Department of uh, Industries, to deliver his welcome address. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed dignitaries, industry leaders, and global partners. It is my privilege to address you to the World Food India 2024 as we gather to celebrate innovation, collaboration and the vast potential of India's food processing sector. I warmly welcome you all. So the food processing sector, briefly I just wanted to talk about the India, what, what it is, how it looks like. So. Food processing sector is a cornerstone of India's economy, linking agriculture to consumers both domestically and globally. As the second largest food producer in the world, India's agricultural resources are vast and diverse. To fully realize this potential efficient food processing is like processing is key as it reduces waste, increases shelf life, and ensures access to nutritious food. It also boosts farmers' incomes by expanding market access and generates significant employment. A consumer preferences generate significant employment for processed and packaged food continues to rise, positioning this sector as a major driver of India's economic growth. As you know that uh, PM Modi, we are actually blessed to have as a Prime Minister for India, I think last 10 years, I think uh, you, have d you have seen a lot of changes because of him. And I, th I don't think if uh, PM Modi was there, I don't think India would have been like this. And coming to our Andhra Pradesh, our uh, Chandrababu Garu, you all know, he's a big brand, 
than anyone today if you are seeing all these conventions this kind of thing started in 1999 itself i mean he has become the second time second time chief minister so a lot of uh, things what he has done during his tenure i think now we have advanced and then we have uh, invest india all these associations uh, even in, in, in just copying our state a uh, lot of other states of other states of also have come up like uh, what we have like economic development board uh, andhra pradesh all these things have happened so i think we have the biggest brand uh, that is chandra babu garu and uh, why you should invest in andhra pradesh uh, uh, it is the rice ball of india you all know that everybody knows about this so we have a great raw material advantage one is we have uh, Uh, we produce around 30 me- million metric tons of fruits and vegetables annually that includes mangoes which is uh, almost second largest in india for we produce around 4 million tons bananas around 4 mil- 4.7 million metric tons papayas largest producer in india 2.1 million metric tons additional crops like cashew coconut guava chilies and dragon fruit along with being a leader in oil palm production and marine products contribute to 37% of india's shrimp exports the state's rich agriculture output ensures direct farm to factory supply chains offering huge potential for value added products like juices dried fruits and ready to eat meals and we'll be coming up with the new food processing policy also that got delayed little bit because of the recent vijayawada floods that caused almost like 10 to 15 days all the machinery were working on day and night on that so we will be having the food uh, processing policy as soon as possible uh, all i can say is everybody says that you know 2014 to 20 was the best food processing policy that you ha- that andhra pradesh state had so they are all requesting that it should be equal to that or better than uh, that so i am sure we will be able to give best and chandra babu garu's uh, vision is also that you know vision idea thought uh, that he has been telling us that the policy that comes out should be best of the five states in in india so uh, maybe within next 15 20 days we will be able to come up with the industries policy food processing policy coming to the skilled workforce that we have in andhra pradesh we 60% of population employed in agriculture that's the biggest advantage andhra pradesh has a highly skilled workforce with deep expertise in farming and food production the state's educational and training institutions regularly produce graduates trained in modern agriculture and food technology practices additionally the government's focus on skill development in partnership with industries ensures that business have a access to the pool of qualified manpower for rapid growth and uh, scalability so the infrastructure and the government support that we have under the dynamic leadership as i told you that chandra babu garu has created investor friendly environment with robust infrastructure including six operational ports three international airports and an extensive rail and road networks so that includes subsidies on capital investment and infrastructure i know that there are incentives that are pending last 5 years nothing was done but uh, cm's uh, uh, thought process that he has been telling on a regular basis that we will have to clear all the incentives uh, which are pending so as you know that chandra babu garu i mean once he is back uh, the hope is also increased so the incentives will be released as soon as possible and then obviously once the new policy comes up the new incentives and all that stuff also will be there and we have already the single window clearance for rapid project approvals so recently uh, sir was telling that it's just not ease of doing business it should be speed of doing business also so things should f- run fast that's the idea it's all these days all these years everyone were t- talking about ease of doing so we want speed of doing business that means that approvals anything bureaucrats everyone should complete that uh, task on war foot basis so that that's the best they 
they actually all the industrial leaders giants recently they have started saying if you are able to uh, give approvals on war food basis no one requires any incentives or anything but your the system gets delayed that is where the uh, you know the giants they feel bad about it so he's been telling that speed of business is one thing is very important and when we attended last uh, couple of weeks back in delhi uh, even uh, the uh, union government central government is also saying that we we will have to bring all uh, like say any industry would like to set up all the other uh, uh, support system like all other like say water approval pollution approval everything should be in one place so that is also that also we are targeting and that we will be the first state to implement that kind of things in india i am i am hopeful that with the support of yuvraj garu and uh, uh, our commissioner we will be able to achieve that so finally i would like to request all of you to invest in andhra pradesh food processing sector because our state offers not just opportunities but long term partnerships for growth and success we are ready for you ready to support you in every step on of the way let us harness andhra pradesh agriculture wealth and transform it into the world class processed products for consumers worldwide we are ready join this exciting journey thank you thank you thank you so much sir uh, for uh, uh, giving a, a lot of confidence to the industry by elaborating the new policy that andhra pradesh state government is going to come up with and also emphasizing on uh, not just uh, ease of doing business but the speed of doing business so that's a motto of andhra pradesh state government so before we move on to the next stage of our uh, uh, session so i would gracefully uh, request uh, mr saju matthew so head of uh, manufacturing oil palm to join the panel thank you thank you so much sir yes sir so now uh, we'll have a presentation uh, uh, by our uh, secretary uh, department of industries on the strengths and opportunities of andhra pradesh for processing yes sir okay good okay so we have first of all uh, good afternoon to all of you honorable minister of industries commerce and food processing government of andhra pradesh uh, my commissioner uh, sridhar and also co panelists we have a very rich uh, panel from different uh, uh, different sectors of the uh, uh, our uh, different sector of our food processing uh, ecosystem and also we have uh, known faces in the audience like gopinath and other people okay so uh, good afternoon to all of you we'll have a very so you can just take it clear out in there okay okay so this is a, a short presentation not so detailed so we'll we'll have more time for the questions rather than this one okay so basically uh, like already our honorable minister has told what did we want for the food processing ecosystem in the state is to make andhra pradesh as the global hub for the food processing uh, industries especially for that one because we have the raw materials we as he told we are going to make that speed up doing business and also we have the long coast lines to make the trading and the export also possible quickly so uh, we are going to categorize the ecosystem into three broad buckets like high protein foods maybe fish and shrimp where we already first eggs already we are production wise we are first also cashew groundnut meat and poultry and dairy and also nutrient rich project uh, products like all youngsters nowadays uh, uh, preferring only uh, raw food and the nutrient rich one so lean foods are there and also for other value products like cocoa and also chilies oil palm and coffee coffee we also have a separate belt of tribal areas where most of the products are organic only so now these are the uh, statistics already told by our honorable minister so what we wanted to do is though we contribute around 37 percentage of india's total shrimp export but most of the exports are on the frozen side so we have to go for ready to eat and ready to cook products so any industries who want to contribute to the tertiary processing in this particular sector will be appropriately facilitated and as well as also incentivized so our policy we are going to make accordingly so that it will be able to do it also because we already there a prominent player in the 
uh, exports. Similarly, chilies, you know, chilies also, it's a good variety of chilies we have. I think uh, uh, Mr. Ganapati will tell about some other things, some other uh, uh, spice also. But chilies we are already having. We have very good uh, chilies available in this area. We have ICS largest uh, chili market also in Guntur. So we thought we will go with the next products. Means we can, we want to go to the product cycle. We want to go to secondary and tertiary also like flakes and also other things also. And fruits and vegetables, our entire Ralsima area and also some part of the uh, uh, middle of the state also contributes hugely. We have all the fruits, whatever you say, and we are mango also. Our mango banganapali is also being exported also. So, how to go about it uh, to our other products like bananas, govas, other things also will be able to go it also. Here also, we want to facilitate more and more secondary and tertiary uh, besides the primary processing. Arco coffee, much talked, and we also know that we have more. Uh, 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 export value also and we have more consumption also increasing so we wanted to go for further products in the Araku area as well so anybody is interested also we are both uh, big chain and branch chain also I request all of you to visit our stall we have some uh, very good uh, small farmer producer organization who has done this uh, organic certification and they are selling also so where we have involved NGOs also it is like a, a full ecosystem wherein uh, uh, your tribal farmers producers and an NGO hands holds them and the government provides them some technical and soft skills and they are able to uh, get the more value. So that is an another things which uh, we want to go for both at the large scale as well as at the uh, smaller level also. Dairy meat and poultry is another area where we have already have some food parts we want to take it further also in this regard. And also organic produce is the one where already our state is doing zero budget natural farming a huge zero budget natural farming is uh, doing you can just uh, check in the website Andhra Pradesh uh, 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 ZBNF and you will get lot of articles and recently we got some award from the uh, uh, good uh, institution also uh, globally also it's a global uh, recognition also so and also we have like our honorable minister told we have a good connectivity it we have around 1000 kilometer of coastline and also we have good port and other things also connected so we'll be able to take care take care also even though hyderabad is hyderabad doesn't have any coastal uh, connection so only andhra pradesh the one which connects to the hyderabad also we have land for all the people whether it is a small players whether it is msmes micro small medium as well as for the large players we have already have our state is the one which has three industrial corridors going along the states like uh, Vaisak Chennai Industrial Corridor, Chennai Bangalore Industrial Corridor and Hyderabad Bangalore Industrial Corridors. So we have across the corridors we have almost like a 16 existing big clusters and also having planning to have another 30 clusters more and some of the clusters also through exclusive PPP mode also. So I request if anybody is interested to develop a particular ecosystem park for the food processing also we are open we have the land and you can also do it like told by the last uh, uh, CEO uh, invest India we are ready to have a separate park for food processing equipment manufacturing as well so if anybody is interested I request the invest India team present here also to convey to the team so that we are because we are also part of the NACDC Nick did which uh, honorable minister told you minister told that uh, we are we are going to coordinate with them so we are ready to have an exclusive park for the food processing equipment manufacturing also. So appropriate incentivization also we will be able to provide so that uh, it can create a good ecosystem also. So these are the various other things which our people have shown. Okay. And we also have the skill uh, resources also like our honorable minister told we are ready to connect with the private industries to see that uh, our IITs and the polytechnics are able to upgrade their uh, curriculum or by way of uh, another arrangement so that uh, you are uh, uh, employment ready uh, uh, user producer from these ITAs and polytechnics. So, and we also have, we wanted to focus because this for the purpose of uh, uh, academic people who are attending here. So, let us see that we address all these issues like whatever has been discussed like infrastructure gaps or post harvest losses. It is a separate subject post harvest losses, how to reduce. So, our uh, uh, CM's motto is each farmer family should have one entrepreneur okay so like we have uh, mafika scheme here pmfme where we are going to credit produce but the number is too small hana and andhra pradesh has only 11000 uh, 11000 uh, uh, micro enterprises only but our our cm's aim is too high vision is too high that uh, so any farmer producing 
should be able to made as a entrepreneur so what is the ecosystem required we can go also chatisgarh is following the rural industrial park model which will try to bring it also so any model whichever whoever is ready please share with us we will be able to do it and uh, please join with us in andhra pradesh like told by uh, honorable minister will bring a very uh, uh, competitive food processing policy uh, which will be able to capture and gopinath is part of the policy so any doubt gopinath will be able to further clarify after we leave also and thanks a lot to all the people for giving me the opportunities thank you so much sir uh, of course though it was a crisp uh, presentation it highlighted all the enabling factors that would propel the growth of uh, food processing industry which included uh, the resources available uniqueness of uh, certain resources especially coffee cacao and other commodities where uh, andhra pradesh has been number one and the uh, infrastructure and the uh, uh, connectivity the corridors industrial corridors that have come up recently so i think uh, broadly you got an idea what where uh, you know the potential of andhra pradesh is and uh, the heights that we can reach uh, in collaboration if we can work with the government and before we move on uh, when before we start uh, the session i would request uh, commissioner of industries uh, to uh, further highlight the strengths of andhra pradesh especially with regard to the food parks and then uh, after the pres after sir's presentation we'll uh, move on to the session uh, discussion thank you subhash uh, uh honorable minister uh, for industries and commerce and food processing uh, shri tg varath garu and uh, my secretary shri n yuvraj garu the secretary for industries and uh, commerce and uh, uh, shri mayuksha the vice president uh, uh, parley group shri sanjay mathew so head of uh, production uh, uh godrej agrovet and shri gadapati garu and uh, shri sachara uh, jakula uh, and shri harish garu so i welcome uh, all the distinguished panelists and also i welcome all the the dignitaries of the dais and uh, uh, the potential uh, industry uh, uh, entrepreneurs so you know andhra pradesh is the the front runner Uh, in many of the uh, aspects especially on the industries and the industrial uh, felicitation uh, felicitation so andhra pradesh is continuously be uh, occupying the top position in ease of doing business uh, you know for the last uh, consecutive all the four uh, uh, ease of doing business so andhra pradesh is uh, topping the list and on top of it the honorable chief minister uh, has uh, put in a new agenda for the department and also the uh, government how do we speed up the business you know how do we uh, you know reduce the timelines in getting the the various permissions and also reduce the uh, the timeline to set up an industry in andhra pradesh and he is also uh, focusing and uh, guiding us in uh, uh how do we reduce the the cost of doing business in andhra pradesh so these are the two uh, parameters on which the new industrial uh, policy and also the new food policy is going to work out and very shortly we are going to uh, bring out these uh, policies uh, uh, for the implementation so coming to the the food processing uh, the specific uh, sector uh, we have at this moment of time uh, nine operational uh, food parks so they are all uh, end to end uh, developed food parks where you can just come in and set up your facilities uh, all the common infrastructure which is required to set up the uh, your unit is already available that is like a more like a plug and play kind of infrastructure so these uh, nine food parks are sector specific also so we have uh, two uh, food parks meant for the, uh, the aquaculture and uh, uh, shrimp processing and we have one uh, food park for the uh, 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 vegetables and the fruits so is almost uh, uh, getting filled up so very few uh, plots are only available and we have one more large uh, uh, food park is also available developed by apic in mallavalli they are also 
uh, all the infrastructure is ready and uh, you know you can quickly set up your uh, facility over there so while we are developing the the sector specific uh, uh, food pass uh, so we are also in the process of uh, developing uh, a specific food park for the feed industry you know both for the animal feed and the the shrimp feed and the aquatic feed so that park is also uh, getting developed and in all the three nodes which recently government of india has announced uh, for the andhra pradesh so we are going to have a uh, large ticket uh, uh, parks for the food processing about uh, 200 to 250 acres in all these three nodes one at the koparthi one at varokal and one at uh, uh, chris city that is krishnapatnam so while we are uh, you know having one of the best infrastructure uh, uh, at the ground level we also have a very robust uh, support system uh, for the industry uh, in the form of uh, the economic development board where we uh, we will have one uh, specific resource appointed for uh, uh, to the uh, the investment uh, uh, to the industry to take care of the uh, the facilitation uh, issues at the uh, field level and also we have a, a very robust and well acclaimed uh, 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 business portal facilitating all your uh, requirements in the sense right from your permissions to the raw material allotment so everything will be done through the portal and it is a very very uh, 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 robust and well acclaimed so you need not though it is a, a single window portal i am i am i am sure that you need not visit to any other uh, uh, you know place in the sense it's a truly in true sense the portal is uh, uh, working and we also have you know uh, a good incentive mechanism for the food processing so andhra pradesh is to have the one of the best policy uh, between 2015 to 2019 and uh, now we are getting back uh, the similar policy and maybe with a top up uh, on it so i take this opportunity to welcome you all to the state of abundance that is uh, andhra pradesh and uh, thank you very much for giving me uh, this opportunity thank you very much thank you thank you so much sir uh, net net uh, uh, there are, there is lot of opportunity in andhra pradesh and we have well developed food parks wherein uh, you can simply come and uh, play uh, plug in and start your activity and we have a single window approval system wherein i mean all the approvals will be given within 21 days and a dedicated relationship manager will be assigned to every industry uh, who is going to invest in ap so these are net net opportunity i mean uh, the kind of support uh, as part of our speed of doing business andhra pradesh is extending to all aspiring entrepreneurs uh, and also entrepreneurs who are planning to expand their business by investing in andhra pradesh so now the floor is open for discussion sir so now i request uh, harish chandra garu to moderate the session we have 30 minutes time uh, as per the as per the schedule but in case if there are any qu queries from the audience the question can be continued till uh, satisfaction thank you please now the floor is open for discussion sir thank you yeah. thank you subhas so uh, before we start the discussion uh, honorable minister has a, a meeting with the railway ministry now so he would leave but then whatever questions are there which is directed to the uh, honorable minister will uh, take a note of it and it will be responded accordingly thank you so uh, we heard in detail about the uh, state of andhra pradesh the prominent role it plays in in the in the sector it's leader leading producer of lot of commodities uh, food grains aqua you have coffee uh, you have spices so fruits and vegetables but overall if we see the the at up to the level of primary processing there's there's lot of infrastructure there's lot of things are happening and the at the secondary level the 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 opportunities are there but it's not there as such in this state and even if it's there that's a limited and there's an immense potential which is there so setting up the today's context where we are saying what are the underlying opportunities we would we have some industry leaders and we would want to hear their views they uh, on the sector specific that they represent like godrej we have mr matthew what what do you think is 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 the underlying opportunity and what what is that that policy level support that would be there 
to establish or to scale up secondary processing when it comes to oil and relevant industries. Hello. Hello. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for, go, for giving these opportunities. See, as far as the oil is concerned, Godrej has already invested 500, 5,000 CR in Andhra Pradesh. So that's a good uh, thing. Why? Because Andhra Pradesh, is, as our Honorable Minister explained, that it is a abundant in agriculture commodities. So that is why Godrej has put uh, 5,000 crores of investment even. And still, Godrej is going to put further investment over in Andhra Pradesh. The good thing which Andhra Pradesh government is doing is the single widow clearance system. So that will ease the operations and setting up new businesses in Andhra Pradesh. Particularly talking about the edible oil industry, there is a lot of export opportunity, particularly in India and in Andhra Pradesh. Already Andhra Pradesh is the hub for the palm oil industry. You can see the major share or leader is the uh, Andhra Pradesh is the leader for the palm oil business. It is well connected with the port and also there is an opportunity for this palm oil particularly in the export like CBS like cocoa butter substitute and cocoa butter equivalent. Why? Because the environment is supporting us. The major factor which is easing the uh, this export is that the food safety and the social responsibility that is round table social rspo responsible palm oil or you can call indian social responsible uh, palm oil ispo sustainable palm oil so this will add will see an added advantage for the andhra pradesh to look into the more opportunities in the edible oil industries especially for the palm oil particularly as per the plant is concerned that palm oil palm plantation is concerned that is giving from a single plant is giving two types of oil one is the palm oil and one is the palm kernel oil and the operation also is a very sustainable operation why because whatever the biomass which has been produced from in the during the operations during the process it's been utilized to produce the steam and produce the uh, energy electrical energy so it's a self-sustained process so if you are thinking in that, still Andhra Pradesh government has to promote further for this oil palm plantations. In fact, if you can see that the palm oil plantation has started in Kerala, but Andhra Pradesh has taken over that plantation from Kerala and now it is well established. Now further there is an opportunity for improving by giving subsidies to the farmers so that uh, it is easy to expand the palm oil cultivation plantations in Andhra Pradesh. So that is my view. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Matthew. <coughs> I appreciate that there are uh, certain subsidies which are available at the farm level also, and how to scale it at next level, probably we can deliberate further on that. Uh, coming to, uh, we have Mr. Mayang from Parley, and the, the uh, state of Andhra Pradesh has abundance of upcoming millets, because millet is a word, buzzword now. We have a lot of dairy and other products which are available. What do you think, how do we scale Mr. Mayank uh, when it comes to bakery because there are limited companies here doing large scale, uh, uh, you know, in the state. What, it, what, what will it take us to scale to next level? Uh, firstly, I think even at the cost of being repetitive, I would like to share that the single window clearance, you know, system in the state uh, with this new government is definitely helping a lot. Secondly, I think, you know, if you look at uh, um, Andhra Pradesh, I think geographically it's very well suited uh, to export if we are really looking at making it a global hub. Thirdly, I think given that you know it's one of the prominent producers of millets and uh, the Government of India initiative of promoting millets globally, I think it makes a lot of sense to you know explore millets in terms of you know making bakery products. We already started doing that. You already have a range of biscuits which are with millets. In fact, we are also into snacks which have millets in it. So I think uh, uh, the more we uh, 
uh, you know, generate awareness about the benefits that this millets have and how sustainable are they. I think, you know, uh, given our climate conditions, it's much better to do, you know, uh, uh, irrigation uh, and, and, you know, cultivate millets rather than, you know, probably uh, many other uh, uh, grains which, you know, require a lot more water. So even from those point of view, I think, you know, we are ideally suited. So if we talk about wheat, wheat actually is not, you know, a, a, a native grain. Millets were our native grains and there are lots of benefits associated with them. So uh, I think companies have realized it. We also have realized that we already started, you know, coming up with a range of uh, millet biscuits. We are also getting millets now into uh, snacking. Snacking in terms of uh, traditional snacks. We are even producing western snacks using millet. So western snacking formats, what I mean to say is. And I think, you know, India can really be a global leader in terms of because uh, when you typically talk about snacking and western snacking, I think the way it's looked upon, uh, it's not viewed very positively uh, globally in terms of, you know, health issues and stuff like that. But the moment you get millets in it, and the moment you know you, uh, 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 you, you improve the nutritional value of it, I think you change the complete perception about that category uh, of snacking. And that's something that we need to do. We need to promote it uh, as a government uh, uh, and uh, you know, uh, as uh, uh, responsible corporates that this is one thing that's going to help you in terms of your nutritional requirements. And this is something that's very native to us that's very native to Andhra Pradesh, that's very native to India and we should ideally, you know, be promoting more of them. That's, that's about millets. On dairy front, that, that's another. We are the largest dairy, you know, products producer in the world, uh, milk and milk products producer in the world and uh, Andhra is one of the top states uh, in it. So, uh, given that expertise, I think, you know, um, we, all, we, have, we have been servicing the Indian market but today if you look at you know, I think uh, we can also look at going global with the kind of products that we have in dairy. And more importantly, value-added products. It's not just basically milk that we are talking about. But how can we use it and create value-added products? Because it's all about, you know, creating that value, moving up the value chain, which is going to give us. Um, Andhra, is, uh, Andhra Pradesh is also ideally suited, as Honorable Minister shared, that, you know, we have very good workforce out there, you know, uh, technical competencies are good. So using that, if we improve our value addition in terms of what we are doing in dairy, I think that can be another game changer. Thank you. So, Andhra as a state has a prominent role to play in spices as well. We all know Guntur is the Asia's largest market for chilies. We have beyond chilies, there are other spices. We have turmeric grown, we have ginger grown in the area. We have pepper in the hills of Arku areas. And we also have some extent of coriander. I'm sure there would be others. But commercially, they have been known Andhra is known for Guntur chili ever uh, since ages. So uh, we have uh, Mr. Ganpati from Net Spices, it's primarily exporting and processing a lot of spices in the country and exporting. So what is it that uh, Ganpati people are looking globally uh, in terms of uh, processing the spices from India and how do you think the state of Andhra Pradesh can really create a value and also how can we bring, you know, uh, a lot of investment in the in the area here. Yeah. So, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Ganapati. Uh, I'll just give a quick introduction about the company because uh, NetSpice is not a known company in India, but then still, we are a, a spices export company across. Uh, we operate in five different uh, states in India, and we have been here in India from past. Uh, 25 years. We are headquartered in uh, Rotterdam, basically a company from Netherlands. And I'm very happy to tell you that today one of our sustainable factories in Maua, Gujarat, got uh, you know inaugurated by Prime Minister Modi, which is a completely sustainable factory 
which doesn't draw any water from the ground or doesn't emit any uh, you know fuel or uh, uh, carbon uh, to the atmosphere so starting with a small introduction and uh, also talking about uh, uh, the potential in india and what the globe is actually looking at in the spices industry maybe this is a very small uh, product which the whole globe consumes but then it is becoming so complicated uh, because if you see in 1990 when the whole spice uh, thing started of exports and all that as you guys would have studied about vasco da gama coming all the way from uh, you know, Europe and, uh, uh, you know, exploring uh, the vast uh, diversity in India and then starting to export spices. But from 1990, if you see, you know, spices was only asked for, you know, a basic cleaning, a machine cleaning, and then it could be exported. By 20, uh, 2000, you know, there was a new requirement of micro levels that has to be achieved. And then later, by 2005, there's a requirement of uh, you know pesticide compliances that has been started. Now, if you see a small spice product, would require so many compliances with respect to pesticide, with respect to weed seeds, and so many things are there in this. And now we are getting to the next thing, which is coming up in the world, is with respect to sustainability and certifications. And uh, as you guys know, in 2015, there was this Paris Agreement through which, uh, you know, uh, a lot of, I think, 193 uh, countries across the globe signed uh, to reduce the temperature of the globe. Uh, so that is actually picking up a lot of traction over a period of time now. And there's a lot of certifications that is required for us to export to different countries. So talking about Europe, if you really want to s export spices to Europe, there's a new regulation coming as known as CSRD, which has to comply to the European norms, and they are supposed to, uh, you know, uh, uh, they are supposed to give the sustainability report in their tax, uh, you know, compliances that they give to the government. You're talking about uh, US. US is asking for you know climate risk mitigation that we need to follow. So how this will impact other countries is that you know we being an exporter to these company or to these countries, we are supposed to comply to these uh, you know uh, the uh, requirements of these uh, spices. So if we are uh, supplying a spice from India then that has to have a certificate that has to have we have to tell that how much of co2 emission is going to happen from this product when it is actually produced these are the kind of compliances that are coming up in the future and uh, you know we have been working in andhra from 2013 uh, we are a major buyer of uh, you know turmeric in andhra pradesh and if you see the andhra's geographical conditions that has uh, six different country, uh, you know, agroclimatic conditions in Andhra Pradesh, has five different kinds of soil that is there in Andhra, which actually helps, you know, uh, us to grow different varieties of uh, these spices. Today, if you're talking about uh, Andhra is one of the state which actually produces turmeric, giving an example, turmeric, which, uh, which gives 1% uh, curcumin, to 6% curcumin. This is the only state which can actually produce this kind of uh, uh, different variants of uh, you know, turmeric. And this cannot be replicated also in other states or other locations. We did try to do that you know, by taking seeds, like what we say, hybrid, you just take it from one location to other and then you grow it. But then it doesn't happen that way for certain spices. So uh, geographically, Andhra has that advantage where you can really you know, work on different varieties and different quality aspects. We have been working uh, across India with more than 4,500 farmers. We directly buy from the farmers. And uh, you know, we have a different model of working where we directly you know, uh, buy from the farmers because when there is a compliance requirement like CO2 emission, today we have reached to a level where we can say that, OK, fine, this farmer has produced so much uh, quantity of spices and he has a, this product has an emission of so much carbon from his farm so that kind of a level of detailing we have got into right now and we have been growing and uh, that's that's what the world is looking for and uh, we are ready to honor that and uh, that's my answer for your question yeah. thanks mr ganpati uh -huh. interestingly uh, uh, 
the state of Andhra Pradesh is one of the uh, key states where natural farming is being promoted in a big way. A lot of it comes naturally, but a lot of efforts has also gone in the state. They have created, the state has created a dedicated organization that actually does promote the zero budget natural farming. Arku Valley is well known uh, for uh, organic co coffee and it's a global brand now. Now, since we are spoke, speaking about coffee, we have Mr. Satya here. Just wanted to understand that majority of coca production doesn't happen in India, right? It has started, we are doing some stuff. Andhra is one of the states where it is being done. So apart from the raw material availability, what are the other enablers that you see for scale? And what's your view on overall making Andhra Pradesh as a global hub for food processing exports? Thank you so much. Uh, good evening, all. So it's, uh, I mean, just to, uh, a lot of people may not be well versed with the name Mondelez. The Mondelez is basically Cadbury. So we are the brand owner of the Cadbury. So uh, in Andhra, we have started our operations in way back in 2016. Uh, so that's the preferred choice because uh, the ease of doing business, one of the best thing that we have, when we have launched this project and the former chief minister and the current chief minister, Mr. Chandrabhav Naidu, who has inaugurated the plant in 2016. So the kind of single windows clearance system is one of the best system which I have seen in because I've been working with multiple states. That is one of the best system which is working as on today. And uh, so all these approvals, we haven't gone to any of the authority. It is simple one tool which has been put in everything in one, less than 21 days. So that's the beauty of the system. It is still working on from the since then. It is launched in 2015, 16 until today. So that's one of the beauty of the state. And also the kind of availability of the raw material and the infrastructure which was created. So we were in, uh, invested roughly about 2,500 crores so far. And there is an additional commitment of expansion of another 1,600 crores. So this is not only a largest plant in India, it is, going, it is the Asia Pacific largest chocolate plant. So the kind of scale and the business what we have seen uh, from the date which we have launched in 2016 till today. So we have seen a potential in the growth. So in terms of infrastructure, in terms of people, skilled manpower, and the electricity, water. So everything is flawlessly available in the state. Abundance of this, everything. So being because our plant is largely dependent on the electricity, and we have 24 by 7, all 365 days power is available to the factory. So that's one of the another beauty that has been created by the state government. So when coming to this, one of the raw material which is required for the plant is chocolate, is the cocoa. So cocoa is something which largely dependent on uh, the import. Basically, we have very limited production in the state. I mean, not even in the country. So Andhra Pradesh is the highest uh, uh, producing. We are approximately 10,000 metric tons per annum as of today. So if you ask me what is the total demand uh, that we foresee for the currently, it is more than 120,000 tons per annum. So the others which we are getting it another 10,000 tons from the other southern states of uh, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, and uh, Karnataka. So still we are unable to meet the cocoa demand. This is uh, from 120,000 tons per, per annum to 20,000 tons. So there is a huge gap of around 100,000 tons as on today what we foresee. So this demand will be so going on day by day and in the years to come it is going to increase multiple folds. So with the current challenges that what we have seen in cocoa from Ghana and all we are currently importing, there is a huge damage in the crop in the Ghana and we are unable to uh, get the import. And also there is an import challenges, there is a huge import duty on the cocoa, which is making it unavailable for the uh, industries to process the cocoa here. And vice versa, even the processed cocoa as well. So although current setup, what we have done in the state by other DP and all, they have already set up the cocoa processing units, which they have completely almost exhausted. So now uh, there is a huge potential to grow cocoa. So cocoa is some crop that which you can uh, get it from uh, palm oil and cocoa trees and uh, 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 these coconut trees. You don't need to clear the entire uh, the uh, field, so you can grow between two trees. So it's uh, actually a very good growth, and we are currently doing in Elur and uh, uh, all east and west Godavari district. And we slowly wanted to increase that cocoa potential to along with the farmers with the state government support towards Vijayanagaram, Srikakulam, other parts of the Andhra Pradesh uh, belt. So we are looking for uh, support from the state government. Uh, probably uh, the more awareness and then the uh, working with the farmers and then uh, setting up some of the training uh, institutes and uh, the quality of the uh, this thing or the quality uh, laboratories and all so which will really enhance the skills and also we try to get into more into cocoa production 
which will not only self sufficient to uh, take our own uh, production and it also we can try an export hub uh, from andhra pradesh uh, and to export from the other countries as well so uh, with that note i would request the state government to look at uh, the potential that we can uh, take up the cocoa in future near future and we have wanted to partner with the state government and work with the farmers to make sure that the cocoa is viable and available in the state in abundance and we can export in future yeah thank you so much thank you mr satya uh, uh, to carry forward your uh, thought on this skill there is one um, state wide mapping of this skill set available is happening right that's an one thing yeah skill census is happening across the state which actually maps the capability that state has in terms of skill manpower that would be needed and very relevant to our industry per se uh once done probably there's also a road map you know to build capabilities around to provide skill manpower across the industry across the geography so that's where uh, andhra pradesh has been a forward looking state the, the state has been very enterprising we could speak about few of the commodities that is grown in in the, in the state like but it's not alone fruit and vegetable is of prime importance here largest producers of not largest but top two largest producers of mangoes tomatoes we have uh, rice second largest producer uh, andhra pradesh happens to be the second largest producer of rice there are opportunities primary level and milling is happening but probably secondary level the new ready to eat ready to consume products which are there in the market as sir was mentioning in his presentation is there uh, we would people who are there in this uh, room uh, interested for the investment opportunities there are abundance opportunities are there infrastructure i would not repeat so that's how it is now uh, uh, we are sort of time we would certainly welcome uh, questions uh, around the subject that we have spoken we heard the industry side we heard the state side let's if you have any questions specifically to any one of us we are sure we'll be happy to take it uh, i'm rajesh shamchandran part of uh, satya state uh basically we were talking about coco and uh, the story of coco in andhra is very very interesting because from zero to 10000 tons was a mercurial growth in a very short span of time so the biggest reason for that was the skill set of the farmers so that is one area we need to develop in the state of andhra pradesh because coco is comparatively new crop to the state and there is not much of research happening in the coco farming science so that is one uh, request uh, i want to do because i start want to give it a one simple example in west africa the productivity of coco tree per tree is just 750 grams in the state of andhra pradesh is 2 kilos so the potential is there to go up to 5 kilos so if you can connect the uh, the dots or the uh, encourage the farming science on coco it will be good another just to add to mr ganavathi's point on the quality aspects uh because certain lot of new rules are coming up and especially eudr rules in Euro europe which is working on the forest uh, deforestation things like that that is something which we need to be sensitive for the future so quality and some research in the uh, agriculture science can definitely make andhra one of the prominent uh, agro industry based that's only suggestion from my side thank you i'd like to add a point to what he was speaking so talking about uh, the certification that he is saying so eudr is coming to specific crops maybe if you are expanding in coffee and cocoa and all that they are the crops which actually need and what we saw uh, about 3 uh, years back is that the qci the quality control of india actually uh, took up uh, certifications of farmers through the corporates how they did it was that we are one of the companies who were first certified for seed spices so the government actually asked corporates to come forward to get a certification of the farmers so you know they had to just help the corporates by helping through the uh, certification fees and we got the farmers certified because the technical side of it is given by the corporates so if you can do that for the cocoa farmers or for the turmeric farmers also on the organic side or the natural farming side they'll get certified and obviously once your product is certified there's a premium definitely the farmer would get yeah thanks see my name is rajesh singh i am uh, cons we are a consulting company uh, working for few corporates in india 
I am also part of one of the uh, World Bank project in Tripura where we are doing some value chain project. Regarding Andhra, I would like to understand whether this palm oil uh, intervention which Gautra is just doing, uh, you are collecting oil yourself or you have farmers producer organization through which you are getting all the uh, uh, raw material. That is one question. The second question is a similar question for the millet. You have farmers producer organization, you are directly connecting to the uh, farmers. And third is from the government. Uh, as we are doing now some projects for f forest in uh, Tripura, where there's a lot of now medicinal plant and uh, natural, uh, I have seen raw materials like honey and all. Do you have also any plan where you would like to invite corporates to engage into honey? or any medicinal plan? These are three questions I want to ask. Yeah, question on the palm oil. See, it is a PPP structure, like public-private partnership. So government allows the mandal to us, and we have to develop the farmers over there. And whatever the fruits, that is called as FFB, fresh fruit bunches, we are collecting in our collection centers, and we are processing in our own mill. So that is the agreement. That is a public-private partnership. Okay. Uh, on millets, uh, uh, we, you know, typically, depending on, you know, availability and stuff like that, try to first, you know, procure it directly from the farmer. Uh, and uh, then we also, you know, if uh, uh, need be, uh, take it from the uh, 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 mandis and other places. But largely, as far as possible, we try and, you know, source it directly from the farmers. Okay, so we have three questions I will address. Eh? So what he told about cocoa is, just I will explain. So because, uh, means basically palm oil, the, the Department of Horticulture, which, which is dealing with the subject, eh, will alert eh, based on the requirement from the companies, certain areas, certain villages, which is eh, where the companies are allowed to go and interact with the farmers and go grow and grow the uh, palm oil, and there will be the direct procurement. So there is a, ma the, because the, uh, the supply side is uh, already, uh, connected and demand side is also connected, so there is a smooth passage of those areas. And uh, we have multiple companies, and there are big companies also approaching where they want to uh, allot more and more areas also. Okay, with respect to millets, what he told is correct. Mostly, it is a uh, uh, we are also as a government, we are planning to go for more and more FEOs because that is going to benefit them. So, and the company is also directly procuring from the farmer, so that we are able to there also. As he told that, we have agriculture marketing committees, which also has to, again, also uh, facilitate them. I have two, three questions on this uh, research on this one. So, we are much interested with the proposal. Suppose if we have any other research institutions, we can be able to uh, guide, we are go going to coordinate with our agriculture universities or any other universities, uh, please share with us, so we will be able to take it forward, because... Uh, the figures are quite uh, interesting from 750 gram to 2 kg to 5 kg because it's very, uh, this one also. On the quality certification, what Mr. Ganapati told, yes, we will take it forward. Right? So, so whatever uh, uh, means I, 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 I request Gopinath after the meeting, please contact with him. See that whether we can make uh, the certification of the farmers producing the uh, raw food for the food processing, whether whether we any, any help of certifications can be done so that uh, more and more farmers are certified for producing a specific category of this one. But otherwise, uh, uh, we will we'll address more and more questions, but these are the uh, points that we will we'll also we'll answer. Also. Sir. Time is there? Yes. Sir, sir last yeah, question. Running out of time, sir. Okay. We'll take one last question. Last yes, question, sir. Yeah, please. Yes, please. Go the mic, sir. Myself. Uh, Mary also will not ask. Na? Please, please, sir. Sir, uh, myself, uh, an entrepreneur promoting uh, food products in the private market and the government market. And uh, in Andhra Pradesh, we got mango, we got coconut, we got uh, uh, what you call different products. Uh, as we got many FPOs and FPs which are working at a small farmer agriculture concerted. I want some solar coal storage to be done in Delhi so that that will help all the FPOs and FPVCs uh, to not only to do promotion and sale, but also, we have got here so almost uh, 195 countries' embassies are located here. Uh, so that we can promote our products. 
that way some value chain can be done to the FPOs and FPCs, sir. This is a prayer and submission, sir, because uh, uh, we have got space in Andhra Bhavan and uh, we have got five acres and everything. So in that, if somewhere, uh, even because basement, as per the Delhi policy, when you construct a building basement, may we can do storage and everything. So if this can materialize, then all the FPOs and FPCs of Andhra Pradesh, they'll all benefit and they'll have some value chain, sir. This is my prayer and submission, sir. for an enriching session everyone thank you so just a short question with the recent reduction in bcd on shrimp feed and aqua feed how are we looking at protecting domestic manufacturers particularly when we look at andhra pradesh wanting to grow in aquaculture so just a short answer from your end will be helpful thank you uh, with respect to cold storage yes we'll definitely will try okay we definitely will try to do for a quicker one on this uh, shrimp we have means uh, uh, you know mpdis we are working with closely with them and uh, uh, even today, our installed capacity of processing uh, shrimp, what we are utilizing is only two-third. And uh, we, we have more and more capacity already installed. And also more and more, more, and more areas also going under the cultivation also. So, and uh, as told by him also, we are going to go for a value addition is the, our main, uh, this one. Otherwise, whatever we are contributing to the export is mostly by the frozen. And also some some traceability and other other uh, diseases because other countries are supporting hugely to the farmers uh, like Cyprus other countries which we are unable to do but we are we wanted to, to see that uh, through labor and other input cost whether we'll be able to uh, will be able to support them we are we are working on that model okay thanks to all the panelists who told very nice words about Andhra Pradesh and the ED, EODB and the single window systems we are very happy to hear from the government side also and thanks for your support continuously. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for uh, joining this session today. And uh, from uh, on behalf of the government of Andhra Pradesh, I would like to thank all the panelists who have provided uh, in insightful thoughts for uh, promoting and, uh, uh, the growth of food processing industry in Andhra Pradesh. So thank you, everyone. And I know uh, we have a lot of uh, questions to ask and a lot of issues to discuss. We have a state pavilion in the hangar space opposite next to uh, uh, stop in hall number 14 so you will be available for the next three days so you are cordially invited to visit our uh, uh, pavilion there and discuss all concerns and queries that you have so now I request uh, 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 secretary uh, industries uh, department to, ha to give them a, uh, give our, all the panelists uh, a small token of honors from government of Andhra Pradesh side thank you So thank you, thank you everyone for joining uh, uh, this wonderful session on uh, making Andhra Pradesh a global food processing hub. So we would like to see all of you in Andhra Pradesh Pavilion in the hangar space. So please do visit us. Thank you. Thank you.